I feel a little bit guilty. It's different languages in each province. It's so hard to understand. So how can I understand everybody in 80, 80 provinces? <laughs> What's up, Philippines? Wow, that took me a lot of energy. It is a little bit late, but it is fine because I am alone here and I'm currently uh, watching a few videos and I thought I'll do some reactions as well because I love doing those. And today I am reacting to Jessica Lee's video, why I can't speak Filipino even after nine years in the Philippines. And I must say, um, I feel a little bit guilty because I can speak the language fluently either. I do understand and can make sense of uh, certain uh, sentences and words. I do have a few things that I know and speak. But for the most part, I am very much relying on most of the country speaking English, which has been a huge factor during my travels. And I figured out, wow, everybody speaks English. Even the people, even like the uh, people in the mountains with like, there was, there's this guy from the Ifugao. He spoke perfectly English and that absolutely blew my mind. So, so I just want to see what Jessica has to say, shall we? Hey guys, it's Jessica here. As you guys all know, the Philippines celebrates its Buana Wika this month. And I know it's a little bit late. It's already the end of August, but I still <laughs> did Bear want to months. make a video celebrating this month because it's a month where we celebrate and promote the national language of the Philippines, Filipino. So in today's video, I did want to talk about my relationship with the Filipino language and my history <laughs> in it. And also, I love the animation some concerns and questions that you guys have been constantly bringing up on my channel oi, 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 which oi. has to do with my poor Tagalog. Oi. I actually learned about Buana Wika when I first came to the Philippines in my early days here in the Philippines because in my school in Bacolod when I was in elementary every August there would be a week where we had to wear Filipino national attire instead of uniforms. Interesting. And we would sometimes even perform, there would be school festivals where we perform a traditional Filipino dances and everything, and I had so much fun. Okay, wait a second. Yeah, I forgot she went to school here, so it would make sense that she speaks the language. But uh, I don't know. I spoke Italian at some point and I forgot most of it. It was a great opportunity for me, I guess, to naturally really immerse myself into this part of Philippine culture. So before anything, let me introduce myself in Filipino. Hi, magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Ako si Jessica. Hindi ko magaling sa Tagalog. Uh, taga Korea ako. Taga Bacolod ako din kasi uh, nakatira ako sa Bacolod for mga apat ng taon. Oh, yun. Salamat po. Okay. I know I could make sense of that as well. my channel for a long time, you would know this, but for those who are new to my channel, I do think that it's necessary that I mention this. In order for me to answer the question of why am I not fluent in Tagalog yet? In order for me to answer this, I need to go back to the time when I first came to the Philippines. So, Ooh, I first story came to time. In 2009 to learn English. So, the total of years I stayed in Bacolod was around five years. So the language they speak in Bacolod is not Tagalog, they speak Hiligaynon. I know for the longest time I've been calling it Ilongo because that's how I remember calling it when I was in Bacolod, even among with my friends. But, but the proper not. way to call the language they speak in Bacolod is Hiligaynon, guys. Hiligaynon. So when I first went to Bacolod and I heard people speaking in Hiligaynon, I thought that was the Filipino language, you know. I was yeah, too makes young sense. to realize that the Philippines actually has 120 different languages i just that's also another point that i wanted to mention so a lot of people said learn the language learn the language and i was like but if i learn tagalog people in manila understand me but if i go to different places to ilocos or like she said iloilo bacolod um mindoro oh no not mindoro whoops mindanao <laughs> it's different languages it's different languages in each province. It's so hard to understand. It makes sense. And like even you guys comment in different languages and dialects and it's just so, wow, overwhelming. I mean, we have nine regions in nine provinces in Austria. Philippines has over 80, 80. 
And it's hard to understand those people in Austria in my own language. So how can I understand everybody in 80, 80 provinces? I totally get her point. Wow. Thought Bacolod is the Philippines. That's what I thought in the beginning. And it was only later when I had to take Filipino classes in school that, oh, so Filipino is the national language. Yeah. Hiligaynon is not. But then it was very easy for me to adapt Hiligaynon because I was young and also my friends would speak to me in Hiligaynon and I remember I would also respond in Hiligaynon by the time. So I did understand Hiligaynon and spoke conversational Hiligaynon when I was in Bacolod. I never really made an effort to learn the language, it just came to me naturally. The language that I really made an effort on to learn is really English because as I told you, I was also not fluent in English. So in a place where it was yeah. even hard for me to catch up with English, learning Kiligaynon plus Tagalog, that was too much for me. So I really focused on English by the time and that okay. continued even when I moved to Luzon in the area where people spoke in Tagalog. First of all, I also have to admit the fact that in my school, everyone was speaking in English unlike the school in La Salle where they still spoke a lot of, you know, Hiligaynon. That's why I really wasn't able to make the time and effort to learn Tagalog consciously. But still, I'm living in the Philippines, so obviously I hear the conversation with Tagalog yeah, um, along same. the way. And eventually I was able to understand all of them. And the only time when I realized that I really had to speak Tagalog and learn Tagalog was after my high school graduation. Oh, interesting. Three years ago. So that was a time I started, you know, consuming lots of different Filipino media just so I can familiarize myself with the language. So I also don't forget because I was in Korea. So I was already forgetting Filipino and I can relate. Really tough. Okay, I can relate. I just mentioned earlier on, I learned Italian. I was fluent in Italian, was the best in my class. And then I didn't speak it for years. And then I couldn't even you know, speak a one sentence properly, so, wow, I can relate so much. But now I'm back in the Philippines and I am still ING in the process of yes. learning Tagalog. So I would say that I'm like the living representation that shows the diversity of the Philippines in terms of the language. Because as I said, there are many different languages in the Philippines. And so many. I'm pretty sure there are people who face kind of the similar problem as me where their first language isn't necessarily the official languages of the Philippines, English or Filipino. So that would be the answer that I would give when you ask me why I cannot speak in Tagalog fluently yet. Also, I know four languages. So English is my third language. If you followed me on my previous main vlogging channel, Making It Happen vlog, you might also be aware that I have been daily vlogging for three years. Three years. Try doing a video for three years every day and then find some free time for some hobbies or <laughs> to learn new things. It was really challenging, I must say. Uh, I tried to learn a few things on the go, of course. I would also take notes. Um, I had some viewers sending me messages um, with some phrases that are very useful and that I use on a daily basis. Um, but honestly, I just couldn't make the time for it. It was just a lot. Try daily vlogging for a week and you will understand. But I know that it might be an excuse. You know, I still had enough time to learn Tagalog, but I would say I was subconsciously affected by the social dilemma here in the Philippines that it's okay to just know how to speak in English. And I think Agree. that's one of the biggest merit that the Philippines has as a country because it is really not easy to find a country where most of the people there speak very fluent English. But I feel like because of this notion, there is also the voice and opinion that the Filipino language is now slowly dying. We're afraid that the Filipino we had a video about language that. will really eventually not get any attention because Aww. nowadays more and more kids are being raised with English as their primary language. Yes. So of course I'm not saying this as an excuse that I don't have to learn Filipino because it is acceptable for me to just speak English in the Philippines. I still stand firmly with the idea that I have to always work harder on learning Filipino because still, I know majority of the people in the Philippines are more used to their own languages in their own regions, either that be in yeah. Tagalog 
Agreed. So if I don't know Filipino, then the possibility for me to communicate with more amazing people out there in the Philippines is gone. Okay, and then also something that I realized is when I'm with my Filipino friends, you know, they're, they're cracking jokes in Tagalog and I cannot follow. I, you know, I'm left out. Not by them, it's me. So I have to make the effort to understand the language as well, to kind of like know what they're talking about, know what they're giggling about. Um, and also it's part of the culture. But as Jessica said, um, the language is kind of like dying. We had a video about that. It will pop up right here or here. Quite interesting approach. She's very articulate about, you know, this topic. I love it. I know a lot of you guys have been asking this question and leaving lots of comments that I should switch to speaking in Filipino in my videos because that's always better. I do think that I have those people as well. It's very deep and beautiful. Again, I know every language evolves and it always reborns into a new form and shape depending on the current social atmosphere. And now we're living in the world where social media is literally part of our souls. Yeah. <laughs> so I know the Filipino language also transforms. There are a lot of new terms, right? New slangs and all of that. Char. So now the <laughs> Filipino language kind of seems very casual. But if you take a deeper look into the language and you know read those classic Filipino literatures or Filipino poems, I get so shocked. So I started my Filipino lesson with a tutor a few months ago, although I had to stop recently because I went to Korea. We actually looked at different Filipino poems and wow! Ang <laughs> lalim! So beautiful. I remember in high school when I got to learn about some Filipino literatures and deep Tagalog, the world of deep Tagalog, I was so impressed and how beautifully the words were put together. It just sounds so nice. It also reminded me of Korean, how in Korean language there are so many things that cannot be replaced in English, you know, where like you can kind of translate, but it just doesn't do it justice. Like there's yeah. so many words like that in Filipino, same in Korean. And yeah. that kind of Filipino is the kind of Filipino I would like to speak. I do not want my broken Filipino to sound like something that's just cute to see because my Tagalog really is in a form where it's, it's just not it, you know. And another reason would be that because my Filipino cute. isn't fluent, I won't be able to deliver message as clearly as I would if I spoke in English. And you know, also I realized when I started speaking English, I needed a lot of time to express my feelings in that language, uh, my character to, to kind of like show you who I am as a person, me as Nelly was so difficult to articulate in a different language because I grew up speaking most of, mostly German, but also Serbo Croatian. So I have these two very different languages and then I have English as well. So um, then I got confused with American English. I learned British English in school. So a lot of factors that kind of like confused me, but I do agree with her. Filipino is a very soft and beautiful language and uh, German is oh, not. I love talking. Literally in most of my videos, <laughs> it's just me talking. So uh, it's very important that I am able to convey the message very well to you guys. And I know by this point, you might also misunderstand that I am trying to give you an excuse to just keep on speaking in English. Same. But again, I I'm really learning. You understand. And I'm feeling that so much nowadays, which is also the reason why I'm making this video. I've been shooting episodes for Trabajo season two. Trabajo is a series that I made here on my channel where I try out different jobs here in the Philippines. So Love this series, you should check shooting, it out. I need to directly communicate with my boss or you know my co-worker of the day because he or she has to teach me all the work. And the recent shooting I did, the Kuya who was teaching me, he was more comfortable in speaking in Filipino, obviously, than in English. That means I needed to speak in Filipino as much as possible so you know we can communicate better. But you know my Tagalog is so bad that I keep like mixing it with English and I sound so conyo, I hate fine. it. I, I really hate it, but I still tried. So I was just trying my Taglish. best. And because he Taglish. was able to see that I was trying my best, he was also trying his best to speak in English. <laughs> and I just felt so bad guys because you know, you're not obligated to speak in English, you know. I am obligated to speak in Filipino. 
for me, you know, I felt so bad and embarrassed. Aww. Hence the reason why, again, I got motivated to how I should really improve on my Tagalog. Although I know I am slowly improving, I can also feel it. I can understand more. Language, I would say, is one of the most precious assets. A it is. Can have. And in the Philippines, they have so many of it. And although I know that it is the government's job to preserve and protect those languages that may have been abandoned by its people, at the same time, I think there's a need for us individuals as members of the Philippine society to stay mm. passionate about these topics. So I guess that was it for today's video. I hope you got Amazing! I love that she did this video because I can relate to all of the points that she mentioned. Great job, Jessica. Finally, somebody did a video. So next time I get a comment of why you're not speaking the language, I will probably just post a link of this video and she explained everything that uh, makes sense to me as well. Nevertheless, I have to say it's always a beautiful thing to know some basics. So wherever you are, wherever you travel to, try to understand bits and pieces like you know, my name is Akusi Nelly. Um, also say, you know, small things like thank you, welcome. You know, just like small things that make people smile because it's those things that make people feel like you care. And um, it is one of the most beautiful things to just know that this person who traveled across the world made the effort to, you know, learn a, a few words that make you smile so that was it for today i hope you enjoyed this video uh, i definitely did i mean jessica does such a great job with her videos i love it that's why i keep reacting to her videos it's just very educational but also entertaining so definitely check out her channel as well and uh, i'll see you guys next time here on what's up philippines oh don't forget to subscribe salamat <laughs>